How are you all doing tonight? My name is Big Bob the Boy, and welcome to Hunter's Guide to Phase 6 Biss. Compared to Phase 5, Phase 6 Biss is pretty easy. You probably won't see a lot of variants in the Biss lists like we did in Phase 5, mostly because the shit out of Nax is amazing. BWL and AQ had a lot of overlap, which led to some more interesting options, but that doesn't mean there isn't a lot to cover. So let's get in it. First, I have to mention Giant Stalker again because someone will ask. There's a lot of Giant Stalker fetishes out there for some reason. Yes, the set bonus is still nice, but we are pretty far past that now, even on cleave fights. It also falls incredibly far behind if you're weaving. Alright, with that out of the way now, let's look at the basic outline of Phase 6 Abyss. And here it is. Now let's break it down. We are probably going to wear 9 pieces of tier 3. Yeah. Even though the set bonuses are not that great, there just aren't many off pieces that are worth using. There's Belt of Never Ending Agony from Kathun. No, that's worse than Cryptstalker. There's Leggings of Apocalypse. Well, these are a few item levels lower than Cryptstalker, but do have really good stats. These can be a small upgrade depending on the situation, but we are talking about an incredibly small number here. Unless you're melee weaving, they do pull a little bit ahead there. Because neither have any hit, and the difference between the two are just so small, they're essentially interchangeable. I guess the real choice is if you want pants to stalk crypts, or want an apocalypse in your pants. And that's a question that'll keep the philosophers busy for a while. So let's talk about the slots where things are a little contested. Like the necklace. You're probably wondering why the Storm Rage neck isn't Biss, because it's really nice and it's item level 92. Item level 92! Well, it comes down to two things, right? The hit and agility scaling. With no agility buffs and everything else is still phase 6 Biss, I'm doing 927.5 with Storm Rage. Swapping over to press doors, we do go down to 924.3. Add in Blessing of Kings, Storm Rage is at 958.3, Press Doors is at 956.4. Now add in Kings and Xandalar, Press Doors pulls ahead. 1010.3 for Storm Rage, 1010.5 for Press Doors. But it does get better. With Press Doors, we have enough hit that we don't need Biznix. The plus 7 damage scope adds in another 6 DPS. Meaning it's quite a bit better at that point. And if your LR press doors is obviously just even better. So what about the cape? Why isn't Shroud of Dominion better than Cloak of the Fallen God? Well, it kind of is. It's in a similar situation to press doors and storm raids, but without the hit to back it up. If you're not agility buffed, then Dominion is obviously quite a bit better. When you are agility buffed, they're nearly identical. Let's look at some numbers here. Shit, I hate numbers. Dominion is at 1000.1. Fallen God is at 1000.3. <laughs> this is fully buffed. Swapping to LR, then Fallen God obviously gains a little bit. Now, it's going to switch on Horde side because of no kings. At that point, you get 1014.9 for Fallen God and 1016.2 for Dominion. That's still a really small difference. But yeah, at that point, I, I can see it being more than just some people. If I was on Alliance, I would stay with Fallen God. On Horde, I'll try to get Dominion, but it's not a top priority. That's how I look at it, but I don't know. I, I drink a lot when I do these videos. Alright, and on to the weapons. As I mentioned in the Nax loot guide, there are six good one-handed weapons for Hunter and Nax. But we want to narrow it down to the four with Hit. Because we want to drop Biznix. Using the other two weapons and Biznix is less DPS than the Hit weapons and a damage scope. So, the four remaining weapons are all really good. The best combo is King's Fall in the main hand and Ableist in the offhand. The exception being if your alliance is fully buffed, Harbinger of Doom does pull slightly ahead of Iblis in that case. 
I'm going to assume King's Fall is going to be pretty hard to get for most people. So really any combo of the other three is good. As Horde, I'm going to try for Iblis and Harbinger. Then if I can make it happen, throw King's Fall in that main hand. Let's cover trinkets real quick. So not a lot of variation here. We're sticking to what we had in phase five, with the exception of wanting to get Slayer's Crest to replace our DFT or Eldritch Thaws. There's also Seal of the Dawn and Mark of the Champion. If you're fighting undead, Seal of the Dawn is really close in value to Black Hands, but obviously it's better than Eldritch Thaws and DFT, so it's worth throwing that on until you get Slayer's Crest as long as you're up against undead. Now, Mark of the Champion is really damn good. We always want that on if we're against undead. Seriously, it's it's incredibly good. We want that shit. What about the BVB gloves? Yeah, we, we still want to wear those. If you have the rank 12 gloves, you don't want to drop those. That multi-shot bonus is still just too good, even if you're melee weaving. Now, if you're wearing those, you might want to keep in mind the set bonuses since you can still get up to eight pieces even while wearing them. Probably won't matter since it's just reduced mana cost, but it's something to note. <sighs> All right, looking good. But, you know, what about melee weaving? Oh, shit. Melee weaving is a bit of a bitch in phase six because we're using hit from our stat stick weapons. First thing, we can pick up some hit from our ring slot. Band of Unnatural Choices is the natural choice for this. What? Band of Unnatural Forces. No. Band of Unnatural Forces. So a melee weaving set would bring us here. We do want to use Shroud of Dominion when melee weaving. Surprisingly, it does pull ahead over Fallen God, despite that strength. Leggings of Apocalypse. They also pull ahead enough when melee weaving that I'd say it's worth using them over Cryptstalker. And of course, we need to swap in Hit Ring, Band of, At Band of Unnatural Forces, moves into Crypt Stalker Ring's place. Here is the tricky, shitty part. This brings us to 8% hit. We dropped 2% hit in weapons and brought 1% back on a ring. However, Eye of Narub is giving us enough skill to equate for 0.8% hit. That leaves us a 0.2% chance to miss on a boss or level 63 target. Adding in a piece with 1% hit to make up for that is a loss, so we can't do that. It's probably worth adding in 1% hit when you're doing Trank Shot. Otherwise, Melee Weaving Biss leaves us with a 0.2% chance to miss. It is what it is. All right, and people asked when to break the 8-8 dragon stalker set bonus for tier 3 pieces and there's no easy answer for this it depends on two things how many hunters in your raid and which piece you're replacing with no other hunters around a good piece like the helm or chest you won't break it right away for other pieces you might see a loss if it's just one piece that you're swapping out i would just worry about my personal dps and swap a good piece in right away like the helm i'm not miffed over other hunters and you shouldn't be either because remember we're gonna have to chloroform them if nerubian slave maker drops anyway and lastly enchants so enchants haven't changed since phase five except for the shoulders there's now might of the scourge which drops from saffron pretty sure hunters get prio on this because of master race <sighs> all right be sure to let me know in the comments when you get nerubian slave maker so I can be disappointed since I'm sure I won't have it by then. And let me know what other Hunter or WoW related content you'd like to see on here. I've still got a lot of classic things I'm working on, but I'm also going to run a little Shadowlands on Hunter when it drops, so be sure to check back here for that. If you enjoyed the video, hit that sub button, bell, like button, weave button, share button, all that other shit. They really help the channel grow, and I really do appreciate it each and every one I get, but that is going to be all for this one. I really appreciate you all watching, and I will see you all for the next one.